In this video I'll be doing a deep dive of the Spark SP6's uh, reflector as well as the unique uh, emitter arrangement. So once you get the bezel removed that holds the lens in place. Uh, it's reasonably thick and chunky as you can see here and a reasonably thick o-ring here and then finally the reflector. And unfortunately I'm not sure if that really comes out for you but hopefully you can see that there's four evenly divided sections uh, for those four side firing emitters to reflect into. Right? Now if you look at the back of the reflector you'll notice that there are these two holes here um, intentionally machined such that they go into place of these two nodules here to help perfectly center that reflector. Okay, Sorry, I have to hand hold the camera because I need to get um, around this emitter and get you guys some close-ups of the arrangement. So getting back to the reflector really quick, it measures roughly 76.3 millimeters I think, or 73.6, I can't remember, um, but it'll be in my review. Uh, basically translates into 3 inches for the outer diameter and roughly 22 millimeters deep. So it's not a very deep reflector, but it's amazing, um, I guess, taking all things into consideration, the throw, um, considering how shallow this reflector is. Right. So here we have a close-up of what I like to call the emitter stalk. Um, try to get the lighting better here and see just how far my camera will cooperate in terms of a macro close-up. There we go. Right. So each emitter looks like it's held into place. There's a screw, I don't know if you can see that, a Phillips head right underneath the emitter. That entire stalk measures about 25 millimeters uh, in height. And here again you see the single center reflector. i just leave the lighting alone for a second so I could start rotating this around for you guys to get a better look of those side emitters and wait for the autofocus to catch up. There we go. Let's see, emitter 1, emitter 2, emitter 3, emitter 4. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the light and turn on the turn on the SP6. And go back down to uh, low. All right. So here you can see again those emitters. Now if you notice there are these screws underneath down here uh, it's bolted on from the other side. I, I'm not sure if I could get the head apart but if I can I will but um, that holding bolts it to this plate here and imagine all the heat is transferred from the stock downwards into that massive heat sink um, but assumptions for now since again I really don't know what's underneath there but Based on my initial runtime testing, it's hit 140 degrees almost Fahrenheit um, without any issues, no flickering, no whatnot. So I'd imagine it does handle it pretty well. Now, one thing I did also want to point out again, that center emitter with that really tiny reflector is geared towards flood, right? So if you look at this here, let me get an O ring so the auto camera can focus. Okay. So as you can see, as I start pulling away, that thing just blends into a wall of light. So really, there is no you know distinct hot spot. So again, a center emitter, predominantly for throw. Uh, sorry, predominantly for flood, not throw. Okay. Now, one thing I will be doing is I will be um, graphing the temperature at turn on from low through, uh, sorry, on max after five minutes uh, per request of farm member Carl. Uh, we'll see just how well it can handle the heat and what temperatures are reached within uh, this stock versus what's being transmitted out here to the heat fins. All right. And one thing I did want to go through really quickly before I end the video is the uh, UI of the light. So the Spark SP6 has four modes, right? Uh, one hidden and four output levels, I should say, not modes. Four output levels, one hidden mode, which is the strobe. Now when you um, press and hold the button, it'll cycle through the four modes. So it's low, medium one, medium two, max. However though, okay, as you're changing mode, I'm in medium two right now. If you press and hold right now, it will always default to low for its next level. It will not continue sequentially. So if I press and hold, it'll jump back down to low. All right, so low, medium one, medium two, max. Low, medium, okay. And it is memorized after three seconds from turn on, 
So after three seconds, shut it off, turn it back on, it'll come on medium. But again, if I want to cycle, always default back to low. Okay, so I hope that gives you guys a rough idea as well as a decent close-up of this unique emitter arrangement of the SP6. Thanks for watching.